All praises are for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. First and foremost is to praise Allah. We praise Allah, we thank Allah. Because without thankfulness and gratitude, insan has already been created in such a state. Allah for himself, he says, Inna al-insana la kafur. Mankind, this human being, they have been created in such a way that we turn, in, in, we turn to Allah, not, on, not with shukr and thanks, but we turn to Allah with ingratitude. We turn away from Allah. Allah Ta'ala, He is deserving of all thanks. Things that we recognize that He bestows upon us. Favors, ni'mat and bounties. The goodness that Allah keeps distributing throughout the world. The goodness that Allah has bestowed upon you and I. Being ummatis of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Have you ever taught? Have you ever pondered? Have you ever contemplated on the fact that we have been created? We have been created and we are followers of the best Nabi that Allah Ta'ala had created. The best Nabi that came on dunya. The best Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one who Allah for himself, Allah names him and Allah calls him Habibullah, my beloved. What is it that you and I did to be under such a banner? To be under such a flag? We are the torchbearers of Allah, representing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, following the prescribed way, the way which is known as Al-Islam. We can't thank Allah enough. Sometimes the things that we fail to see what Allah is doing for us. The things that we don't achieve and accomplish in life. It causes us to become ungrateful to Allah. Without realizing or thinking for once that what Allah is not giving to us. It is because Allah has something better and Allah is protecting us from something. We can't thank Allah enough. We can't praise Him enough. We send peace and blessings on Allah's final messenger. Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The last of the prophets. The seal of the prophets. The one who came last but be, will be resurrected first on the day of Qiyamah. The one who will intercede on behalf of his ummah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. While many prophets will be running, many prophets will be running away from their nation, running away from their community, running away from their tribe. Adam alayhi salam will have too much on his plate. Their claim on that day will be nafsi, nafsi. Today I can't see about you, it's only me. Isa alayhi salam, oh my mother, I can't see about you today. I can't even see about myself today. Today is only me can't help nobody Musa alayhi salam great ambiyas nafsi nafsi me 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 nothing to do with their community one nabi on the other end one nabi subhanallah for the entire humankind he will be crying ya rabbi ummati ummati ya rabbi ummati ummati oh allah my people my people you and I, and those who are yet to come. What did we do? What did we do to be an ummati of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? This ni'mat and bounty alone is more than we can give shukur and thanks to Allah for. Just this one thing, we must sit down and contemplate and ponder. Ponder of the lives of those people of the past. People who gave their lives for what we have today. People who sacrificed their wealth for what we have today. They lost their parents, both mother and father. They lost their children. Subhanallah. They lost their businesses. They lost their hometown. Everything that they had, they lost it only to preserve what we have today. This way of life called Islam. 
my dear brothers, my dear sisters, it is about time that we wake up. It is about time that we turn a different page. It is about time we see things differently. Today is a new day. It is a new month. A new month have started. The month of Jamadi ul Thani. After this comes the month of Rajab. Then the month of Shaban. And we know very well the month of Ramadan is right next door. It's right next door. Let's not wait for when Ramadan will knock on our doors because we don't know if we're going to leave here alive. We don't know. Just this morning after Fajr Salat, one brother is saying, Imam, make dua for my mother. She passed away last night. Right inside the masjid, he's saying this. As I exited, subhanallah, another brother is saying, Imam, today is my birthday. Huh? On one side, one is mourning. On the other side, one is celebrating. Let us understand this world. Let us understand this life. What Allah has given to us is precious. More than this life is the iman that Allah has bestowed upon us. Because life without iman is no life at all. It's no life at all. A person lives a life and no belief in one Allah. No belief in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When that person dies and goes into the cupboard, what kind of life did he live? No value. Iman is the key for the akhirat. Iman is the key for this dunya. For us to recognize and understand what is it that will move us to the other phase is Iman. Iman. And by so doing, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, the Prophet wasallam, he mentioned to us in beautiful narration, all his words, all his words, he never spoke. He never spoke on his own. On his own desire. The things that he for himself wanted to say. Except that he was inspired by Allah. Many people came in the past, in the present, and many will come. Many people set out to do different things in life. Some people are businessmen. Some people, they have different professions. Teachers and doctors and lawyers and you name it. And everybody has something different. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions in the hadith, he says, Ma uhiya ilayya. It has not been revealed to me. An ajma al mal wa akuna min al tajirin. It has not been revealed to me that I should amass wealth. I should gather and pile up wealth. That is not what Allah has revealed to me. It has not been revealed to me that I should be from amongst the businessmen, the traders, the merchants. No. On the contrary, he says, Walakin, but, Uhiya ilayya and sabbih bihamdi rabbika. But it has been revealed to me that I, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I should do tasbih of Allah. I should glorify Allah. I should praise Allah. And I should be from amongst those who humble themselves in sijda. In sijda. Subhanallah. Let us understand, just last week we were speaking about salah. Salah. The requirements for salah. Do we understand when we say Allahu Akbar, what it is we are really saying? Do we understand the postures that we go into? Do we understand why we say Subhana Rabbi al azim in Ruku? What is it that we learn or we get out of salah? It is just, is it just a movement? A form of exercise? <laughs> or is something that we do so we say, we got it off our back so. Is it that? A person says, Allahu Akbar, to surrender himself or herself to the fact that now and forever, 
there is nothing greater than Allah. There will never be anything or anyone greater than Allah. I surrender myself to Allah. He is greater than everything and anything. Allahu Akbar. A person recites Surah Fatiha and another portion of the Quran. Even within that recitation, even within that recitation, we rattle it out like a parrot. We use the shortest surahs in our salah because we want to finish it so quick. Sometimes we forget even where we reach in a recitation. We read so quickly that we don't even understand when we say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. What is it I am saying? Our hearts are here in this body. Our hearts are here in the body. Our minds are somewhere else. When a person goes in Salat, his heart has to connect to Allah. This is why this is the description, the description for Salah. As-salatun mirajul mu'min. This is what it is. If we, don't, if we don't experience that, it means that we have to improve in our Salat. Salat is the ascension of the believer. The ascension. Do we understand what is mi'raj? We hear about it all the time. Where the Prophet wasallam was taken from one place to another place and then straight up into the heavens. To converse with Allah. To converse with Allah. Allahu Akbar. When the believer says Allahu Akbar and stands in Salat, if that conversation is not taking place with him and Allah, then he has not yet entered that state of miraj. No. The believer is made to be reminded after Surah Fatiha, after another Surah, to say what? Allahu Akbar again to go in Ruku. Allahu Akbar again to go in Ruku. Reminding himself. Reminding himself that I started knowing the fact that Allah is the greatest. He is greater than anything. During my recitation, I forgot that. I forgot that because my thoughts weren't on Allah. My heart wasn't on Allah. Allah brings back the reminder again. Ya Abadi, O oh my servant, what is it that you are doing? Allahu Akbar. Go in Ruku. Bend before your Allah. Bend before your Allah. Subhana Rabbi al -Azim. I know that glory is for Allah. He is the greatest. When the servant does that, when the servant recites that, Allah says what? Sami Allahu liman hamida. Allah has heard the one. Allah has heard the one who praised him. Subhanallah. Imagine we saying Subhana Rabbi Allah but our heart is not with Allah. That praise is not with Allah. That glorification is not with Allah. How many times we sit and we do tasbih and we say Subhanallah, 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 Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. And Subhanallah, 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 Subhanallah. And just rattle like a part without for once understanding Subhanallah, glory to my Allah. Huh? That one tasbih that is done with the consciousness that this heart is connected to the one that it is glorifying. That one tasbih will do wonders for you and me. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that. وَلَكِنْ أُوحِيَا إِلَيَّا أَنْ سَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ But on the contrary, it has been revealed to me that I should glorify my Allah, that I should praise my Allah. وَعَبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ And worship my Allah. Worship Allah. When? Until when? Until that, that certainty will come. Until that time, we should worship Allah until the angel of death will come and take us from this world. Sajda. Allah loves it. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ju'ila qurratu aini. 
جُعِلَ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي فِي الصَّلَاةِ The delights and the coolness of my eyes have been placed in salah. Huh? What it is we look at and find comfort. Who is it we look at and find comfort? The wives, the husbands, the children, the paper, the plastic. What is it that brings comfort and delight to these eyes? The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He says Ju'ila qurratu aini Fi salah The delight of my eyes Subhanallah The sweetness of my eyes The coolness of my eyes It has been placed in salah In preparation for Ramadan My dear brothers, my dear sisters Let us learn How to make our salat Meaningful Meaningful Don't just pray And do the actions No Perform our salat with meaning Make our postures properly When we go into ruku Go in a state of tranquility And praise Allah Subhana Rabbi al Azim Three times Not quick, 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 quick and stand up Before we can even stand up straight We don't into sijda No Come up and stand up perfect. Rabbana lakal hamd. Stand up perfect. Then Allahu Akbar. Go into sajda and praise Allah. Glorify Allah. Subhana Rabbi al ala. Oh Allah, while I am standing, I am tall. While I am standing, I am high. I am the king. I am the ruler. I am the mufti, I am the imam, I am the sheikh, I am this person, I am that person. While I am in the ground, then we understand who is the highest, who is the master, who is the one that holds all the authority, and we are nothingness in front of Allah. Allah puts that in salah. Glory to my Allah, he is the highest. He is the highest, he is the malik, he is the king. He is the malik. He is the owner. He is Al Malik. He is the master. We are only slaves. We are servants of Allah. The best title that anybody could ever get in life. In life. The best title that come on our records. The best title that we can hold in a certificate in front of Allah on the day of Qiyamah is to be called Abdullah. To be called a servant of Allah. That is the best title. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given the title. We also forget. We forget with the little positions that we hold. We forget who we are in front of Allah. We forget who we are when we meet people. We look at ourselves different and we look at them different. We see ourselves sometimes above and we see them down there. We use our might and our power. We use our rank and our status to get through with things in life without realizing that the only person, the only creator, the only being that can do anything for us is Allah. Nothing happens. Illa bi iznillah. Except be the permission of Allah. Whether it's for the king or for the beggar. Whether it's for the rich or the poor. Whether it's for the one who is beautiful or the one who is ugly. Anything. That comes to us, it comes with the permission of Allah. When Allah helps a person to beautify his salat, it is because that person wants to beautify his salat. The irada and the tamanna, the wish and the desire, it has to come from within the hearts of the individual. Otherwise, 24 7, 365 days in the year, or 66. We will be performing the same salat if we didn't have that wish in our hearts, that desire in our hearts that, oh Allah, help me to beautify and perfect my salat. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, this is gearing up towards the month of Ramadan. Gearing up ourselves, preparing ourselves for Ramadan. Sometimes I sit down and I think, 
what to talk about for a cutback. What it is to say. People will say the same thing again. Salat. Some people come to here. Money. To give to the masjid. To give, to give. This is all they talk about here. And I say to myself, but if we hear the same thing again and again, and it's not having no effect in our lives, well then we have to do it again. If you're telling your son the same thing, and your daughters the same thing, every single day of their lives, same thing, same thing, same thing, and they're not listening, what you will do? You'll stop telling them. You'll continue to tell them until thy kingdom come. Islam is that. Not that we hear the same thing again and again. Is that when we hear the same thing again, we make a change within our lives. We do things different. We do things different because the Quran is the same message again and again, again and again, again and again, from then till now until the last day. One message. One message is how much of that message we are taking. It's one salat. One salat. One type of salat. We pray five times a day. It has the same objective. Fajr, Zu, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. One objective in salat. One objective is to make a link with your creator. If I am not getting that, it means I have to what? Improve in my salat. Improving my salat. Let us try. Before Ramadan comes, before Shaban comes, before Rajab comes, let us try from now. Make a firm intention that I am going to try to improve my salat. Many people until now, they don't know how to say, At tahiyatu lillahi wa salawat. What we say when we sit in Qada or in Jalsa. They don't know what to say. Many people don't know do a kunut, what to say in witir salat. We don't know. But we are performing salat. We have to improve. Many people don't know how to recite Surah Fatiha properly. This is a fact. It is a fact. I am not perfect. None of us are perfect. But we have to strive for perfection. We have to strive. We have to make our kirat properly. We have to make our recitation properly. We have to learn our Quran properly. May Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq and the ability. May He grant us with the help. May Allah put it, put it in our hearts so that we will make a serious, a firm, sincere intention to beautify and to improve and perfect our salat. Because salat is the coolness of the eyes of the Rasul. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is the gift that he brought to us straight from Allah, straight down to the earth. From the heavens, conversing with Allah, Allah granted him with that gift. He brought it for his ummah. Eh? We, we operate so stingy that if somebody give us the best thing, the best thing, let me say we get the best ride, the best transport, eh? Or the best sneakers. Or the best of whatever, whatever we like as the best. You think we go and share that with anybody? If you want to keep that for yourself. We want to keep it for ourselves. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He shared it with his ummah. He brought salat and he shared it with his ummah. Let us take care of it. Let us polish it. Like how we polish the car. More than five times a day we polish the car. Yeah. Let us polish our salat because that salat is going to stand for us on the day of Qiyamah. On the day of Qiyamah, either take us up or it will pull us down. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, The first thing, the first thing a man will be called to give an account for on the day of Qiyamah is his salat. Salat. If it is intact, Things will start to go a little good. If not, well then, I don't have to tell you the rest. May Allah Ta'ala help us. May He give us all that is good for us in this world. May He give us the best in the hereafter. May He save us all from the torments 
of the hellfire. Walakhir dawana and alhamdulillah, the Rabbil Alameen.